Hi everybody! I'm doing a 30 minute soul journey session and I'm going to be sharing energy work and wisdom for a client who is a QHHT practitioner. And I've done work for this client um, some months ago and so this is a follow up session. And the goals for this session are really awesome. They're long, so I'm gonna um, copy and paste them into the description for you guys to read. I'm gonna try my best to kind of, um, you know, move through it in a way that we can um, all understand what the focus is, and then I'm gonna start the session. Okay, this is a cool part. So it says, um, I'm a QHHT practitioner, and I was doing a session on someone close to me. I was given the message that I needed more healing from you. I was not finished healing and I needed to heal in order to help others more effectively. I asked Spirit, what question should I ask? I was told that I needed to build a castle, a new castle. I needed to let go of old patterns and old beliefs and build a new castle. That is so cool. <laughs> okay, so you, you share some other stuff about... Um, your relationship with old patterns and beliefs which you're wanting me to take a look at so we can move you on from some of this stuff. Um, so you say that I, I feel slow, sucky, inferior, timid. Um, that's me. That's the program I'm running. I try to cope and wish I could hide. I like doing no self meditations because it's a nice escape and relief to see that it is just a thought pattern, nothing real. I asked in the QHHT session if I would be able to realize no self, and they said, you? Absolutely. <laughs> so I re would really like to dissolve the self and all these insecurities so I can just be. And there's so many cool things you said. Um, I think that really sums it up. Give me just a moment here. I'm just absorbing all of your awesome goals. And I know you were a little nervous to share, so thank you for having the confidence because I know that there's a lot of people that are going to appreciate it. Okay, I'm ready to get connected now. I love this new castle idea. I'm really interested in it. <laughs> All right, got to get in the zone here. Wow, I don't, it's a bit of a strange introduction. It's kind of hard to figure out how to describe what I'm looking at. Let's say we're looking at a rock wall and you're having to climb a rock wall. So obviously you need to find the different places to put your hands and feet. This rock wall is not made out of rock. It's more made out of a, a denser liquid. So it's got a squishiness to it. It's a bit slippery. Um, it's also interdimensional, so it's not exactly the whole picture. So I see you trying to climb it, but I also see through this picture to another version of something interconnected. And what that looks like is dark blue and black, okay? It's like a gradient of dark blue and black. And I'm looking down from above, and there's a lot of awkwardness in the third eye, which is something that you're experiencing. So I experience what you experience. And it's like I'm having to look down. Like, I'm looking straight ahead, but my third eye must somehow look with a curvature. So I can't seem to turn to look. Um, and the third eye is really jarred by this. And so, and the throat also is jarred by this. Give me a moment because I'm going to slow all this energy feedback down. Yeah, you're in like a weird cake of just spongy, dense, goo, gooey liquid. It's literally, it's showing me another image of the same and it looks like a perfectly formed cake. Um, but it's all made out of a mold of like a dense slime, right? And it's a light green color. It's actually really cool looking. It's like perfectly formed right now. So this is the next image um, in order to comprehend how things are changing. But you're kind of swimming about it and you're trying to get yourself out, but you still are kind of stuck within it. Um, 
You're also looking at this mold from a distance as though you are free from it. Um, you see all the interdimensional stuff going on here? So what is the one thing that we are going to participate in experiencing right now? Or are we going to participate in experiencing a bunch of different things molded together, shaped together, and try to figure a way to climb our way through it or out of it? So somehow we need to simplify the experience here. Your your mind is going uh, like like you're you're like a deer in headlights and your your hamster wheels are turning but no nothing is coming through. So you're like blank stare looking at me like in your eyes like is there hello <laughs> hello <laughs> well your wheels are turning but no they're not like turning out a re response so you're just like oddly staring at me. You, you're not, um, what in the world is blocking you from relating to what I'm saying here? It's like there's a major block that just doesn't choose to process or digest um, um, information that is going to solve the problems. <laughs> so it just won't digest that information. So you're going to continue to be doing this because for some reason this makes sense to your deeper essence. Now, if I were to say, okay, life needs to be a dark blue and black gradient intermixed, interdimensionally intermixed with a strange slime rock wall where you're never going to be able to climb out of it while simultaneously you'll be looking at it from a distance and it's going to look really perfect and really pretty and really great and you're not going to be in the middle of it and then you're going to smush all of this experience together and that's normal life. Now, now this is like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm so into this right now. I so get this. <laughs> but when I'm like, okay, you need to just simplify life, you're like, I'm hearing crickets and you're just looking at me. <laughs> so it's like, really? <laughs> we're, that's the old, that's the program. We're going to let go of the old castle. All right. <laughs> Time for a new castle. Okay. You're super, you're super, um, you're smarter than this. I keep um, experiencing a message that says you're smarter than this. Um, and it's not as if I'm telling it to you. It's like you're trying to tell yourself, I'm, you know, you're smarter than this. Why do you keep doing this? You're smarter than this. Um, so I'm saying this to you. I don't necessarily um, approve of that message because it's kind of degrading to you because uh, you're smarter than this. So it's all your fault that you're in this situation and you should be able to figure it out because you're smarter than this, which only makes you feel even more crappy because you can't figure it out, which means you're stupid. <laughs> And that's not really fair to you and not really fair to what you actually are all about, which you are, you have so much to give. You have so much to share. You're really interesting. <laughs> you have an interesting energy field. I could see you being a creative person. <sighs> okay, I've almost busted through that wall. And you needed to hear somebody tell you that from deep down inside of you that you're degrading yourself by saying you're smarter than this, which is keeping you beneath the, the surface here of, of the ceiling that you're ready to bust through and the ascension levels that you're ready to achieve, okay? And you tell me, but it's so hard, Abby. It's just so hard and you're kind of giving up. Um, you're actually kind of like, ah, but it's just so hard. <laughs> You're like this, but I don't believe you because I have felt um, the expression of it's just so hard and I'm experiencing um, the energy field of somebody stretched so thin. I have no idea how they will actually conquer this. You're not stretched thin, actually. You have what it takes to not say that and to face this, but there's something of um, the depleted energy because you're intermixing all this dimensional stuff when you don't need to. And once you figure out what life is like without doing all that, you're gonna be like, oh, now you have all this energy that you already had. You were just distributing it in a way that was draining you, um, but you're not actually stretched thin. So um, you could quickly rebound here. I just got to help you to see all this stuff. This is altering the program. You kind of want an excuse, so you just, just you're kind of like, Abby, just let me say this right now. Just let me say this right now. But it's just so hard. 
<laughs> You're making me laugh. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you say that right now, and I'm going to let you own it for a moment. You really want to own this right now. So I say, okay, you can say that. <laughs> I don't know why, but you're drinking um, a Coca-Cola. And I don't think it's like the legit, I think it's the off-brand because it says like cola on it, but it's kind of alluding to be Coca-Cola, but it's like the off-brand cola. I don't know why, but you're just drinking a cola right now as, as you just expressed this need to express this. <laughs> and now you're just drinking a cola like it's a normal day. It's so weird. Do you realize that I'm still like way up here looking down at you like I'm in the eagle range and you're like really small way down there and all you have to do is just stop ignoring what it is that you want and what you want is to move on from this. But what you're choosing to do is still to create reasons why you should stay in the bottom of this avoidance of what it is you truly want. <laughs> So I'm just waiting for you to realize this, but I'm also giving you some hints. <sighs> All right, a little bit of aggressive um, venting here. <sighs> that was actually a bit of a twisted side of yourself, but it wasn't that aggressive. It just, it was aggressive from what we're experiencing here. And it is kind of pissed off at me, and it wants to punch my lights out right now, but it know it, it knows it can't. <laughs> Usually souls don't realize they can't punch my lights out, <laughs> even when I tell them, okay, you can punch me. And that they, just, they don't realize I was like, yeah, I can't really punch you. <laughs> You're like already like, I know I can't. <laughs> and you're annoyed. <laughs> This is just a little bit of twisted side of you and you're venting. And it's keeping you in lockdown, just so you know. Twisted sides are just the, the wounded parts that haven't healed. And they're angry and they have a right to be angry. And people should know this and people should care. And I'm not going to stop um, being hurt and angry and upset about this until somebody cares. And even when somebody cares, it's still not going to be enough. That's kind of what twisted wounded sides are like. They can be challenging to heal because they got twisted over time. It doesn't just happen like that. <sighs> very, very meager on the twisted um, scale, okay? <laughs> very light. Still pissed off. Still pissed off at me. I'm just saying the door is open any day now, any time now. You're more than welcome to just, you can forget about me. Just go through the door. That's what you want. You're again creating a distraction, voiding what it is that you want. And now you're taking it out on me in order to continue with the distraction. This is your deeper stuff, just so you know. <laughs> Okay, your twisted side is still, um, she shows me my face, and my face has got, like, weird sores on it, and, uh, it's, like, melting flesh. Hmm. And then she shows me taking a pencil that's very sharp and stabbing it just to the side of my nose. Not in my eye, or it's just very strange, very specific location she wants to hurt me right here. <laughs> and she's shoving it. I mean, I have to say all this stuff because your deeper essence needs to hear itself. Your conscious level needs to hear. So that way it can say, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And then it can, it can resolve the internal issues and let them vent. So we're going to have to continue to talk about it. So she is shoving the pencil into my face and trying to shove it down my throat. She wants me to choke on it. This is starting to see, see the scale of twisted is right here, but now it's starting to go up a little bit. <laughs> it's like, bring it, just let it out. Just let it out. Keep letting it out. This doesn't hurt me at all, but it's, she does need to vent. Mm, she's creating a scary room. She's like, uh, kind of like a little red riding hood, but she's in blue. 
and black and she's skipping through like a scary forest but it's in like a room like it's like somebody built a giant room or warehouse and then they filled it with a forest and then created like a scene like a like a hollywood stage or something like a real like place but it's all fake and she's skipping through it and she appears to be a little miss innocent but really she's the one that's going to eat the wolf so she's looking for somebody to harm. She's not wanting to let go. She doesn't want to stop being this way. She wants this because it feeds something. So um, it feeds something and she needs that energy in order to sustain her. So for her to starve is punishing her that much more. And she's already been punished enough. So it's a child. You see why twisted sides are hard. They're tricky to heal because they, because of what they've already been through to get that twisted. And then what they have to go through to heal is also going to feel very twisted to them. So it takes time. She's got a, a lot of throat jams, heart jams, um, upper gut, like... It's emotional gut, but it's slightly above and slightly below the heart. It's just kind of like it jumped up a little bit. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of anger. <sighs> a lot of anger. <sighs> she just like got pigtails on the side. She's ripping them out. She's screaming and throwing a fit. I'm going to create time, all right? And I'm going to take a part of her consciousness and I'm going to show her herself over a million years of time. If she does not choose to stop, nothing will change between today and a million years from now. She'll continue to do the same behaviors. And it's only going to get worse and worse because she's going to have a, even more of a void that must be filled. But none of this is who she truly is. So she's just getting further away from herself, from her true self. This again, this is scrambling your mind. This is where that block is that doesn't want to hear the answer and it doesn't want to participate in seeing the truth. It just wants me to tell you to stay scrambled. So when I speak the truth to her, her mind is starting to crackle and spin and get like it's making a lot of noise and it's it's the truth. The truth is now getting scrambled. But this is actually progress, okay? <sighs> Huge change in the energy, so it's just suddenly very exhausted. And it's all in black. <sighs> very exhausted. I mean, the face. Oh, the third eye. It's not just the mind. I mean, it is specifically the third eye. And it's so exhausting. It's like, it's hard to breathe. My stomach aches. I got like a heartburn and a headache. And my face is like, weighs 100 pounds. And I'm like, Ugh. and I'm exhausted. And she says, I don't get freedom. And I don't get freedom. And she's smoking a cigarette with a ridiculously heavy face and all of this stuff happening. And I show her a million years of time. She says, please don't put me in a prison for a million years. I say, you need to say, please don't put yourself in a prison for a million years. I'm just here showing you stuff. If you believe me, then you felt that this was appropriate for you. <laughs> she hates me for tricking her like that. But again, it's still holding on to stuff. It's got to let this go. She's almost done, okay? She's almost there. Sure, she's... 
it's a, a whole, it's like the stomach aches. It's hard. It's the throat, the mind. I've got like a headache developing here because it, it's like a straight up third eye thing. It's a psychic center thing. It's not just the mind because the mind can be third eye plus human consciousness plus higher wisdom. Like it could be a compilation of that working together, but this is straight up third eye like psychic, um, psychic center energy. I mean, it hurts. My third eye hurts right now. She has to choose to leave. I can't just take her out to show her what she's missing here. She actually has to choose because souls have to learn for themselves. We can um, encourage souls to see other pathways, to make changes, to decide new things. Um, so I can't force her to do what is going to be best for her. She has to find it within herself. That's why it's like, there's something about angels, like how much can angels help humanity if we don't actually ask for help? But if they want to help us, we don't want to work on our issues. We just want them to take it away from us and then we'll be fine. <laughs> you see how real healing works? Real help works? You got to do a little bit of work yourself and you got to want to and you got to choose to because I can't do it for you. You somehow, so the twisted side is still down here and I see your umbrella consciousness looking down into this and your conscious mind more to the surface of, of the present now um, wanted it like this for some reason. I don't know why you struggle to cope with what is beyond you. There's something of a resistance of true psychic um, expansion. And as soon as you let this go, bam, you're on a whole nother level of what you can do. So you see what breaking the old castle down and building a new castle is? It happens on its own. You just simply say, wow, I had no idea that I was doing this to myself because we all get like this, okay? <laughs> um, and once we realize it, we won't be as vulnerable to doing that ever again or we'll never do it quite like that ever again. So you're on the cusp. It's almost like you blew up a balloon as big and big and big and big and big as you could get it and just kept saying, well, I have to just keep making it bigger because I'm not done yet blowing up the balloon. Well, when are you ever going to say that the balloon has enough air in it and I need to just let the balloon go and just why the heck was I wasted just putting so much time and effort into this? I've been spending way too much time and effort in this. It's nothing to do with me anymore. Because I'm totally a new person and I'm a whole new expression of myself. So the balloon is whatever was a great idea a while ago. And now we just need to hear the balloon go and go far away. And then you're like, oh, wow. Wow. I finally let go of all that stuff. Cool. <laughs> now the new castle is built that fast. Because you're discovering you in a new way. And you are a new castle. Okay. This aches, my stomach really, really aches about this. So a lot of this is very um, interconnected with your upper gut, okay? And throat, and third eye. I mean, it's very loud in these places. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna pause for a minute and uh, look for a new inspiration inside myself because we gotta shift gears or go in a new direction because I don't want to keep doing the same thing, you know, just holding on to the same routine. We got to do it differently. I don't know why I just fill this place with a bunch of popcorn and I just fill it and she's just buried in popcorn. I just do that for some reason. It's all white. So like the opposite color of like dark blue into black gradient. It's like all pure white. Almost looks like pearls, but it's, it's a popcorn. I just threw it all in there. I don't I have no idea why, but I did that. And I started to see that the popcorn dissolves and the seeds um all fill the space and they're um merging with the with the soils of this energy space, all right? They're becoming a part of the energy space the seeds are. And these seeds are growable, okay? <laughs> 
something about planting new seeds. And the seeds ask for it to rain. So I, I move night into day, okay? And I move day into the development of a wonderful rain and a rainbow. So it's like day and rain and rainbow together. And it's nice. And it's raining, raining, raining down upon her and about upon this ground, um, which has absorbed so many seeds, thousands of seeds. It's like you're a bug caught in the bottom of a jar and you can't get out, but you can. You just aren't letting yourself get out for some reason. I'm still waiting at the lid of the jar for you to just come out already. The ground is filling up with white puffs. And they look like popcorn, but they're flowers. And there's like thousands of these popcorn flowers and they're puffs. <laughs> they're cool looking. There's thousands of them all around this girl and she's dark, like dark blue skin and black dress and she's like an evil little red riding hood girl in a black forest that's now altering its tune. She isn't moving or saying anything. She's not, she's sort of in shock or in a state of not being in mind or body. Just eyes that see, but nothing really sponges in here. That's kind of what it's like. It's like she's just a, a mannequin, but she's still in there. This again goes back to the deer in headlights. When the answer is before you, you won't see it. You won't allow yourself to absorb it. Um, I don't know why I'm hearing that uh, sh the bad seed, but um, I'm to plant this bad seed and to allow it to grow with the other seeds. So I, I'm transforming her into a seed and it's pure black and then I am planting it in the ground. It's much larger than the other s popcorn seeds. She doesn't want to come out of the earth for a long time. She doesn't want to show her face. But now my spirit guides show a million years pass. And she's so, it's so much time has passed. It's like the human mind forgets over time and um, the way it once was. So she's living in the now and she doesn't even remember that she was like this because it's very much so associating with the human mind and memory. And this is actually good because time changes everything because we can let go of stuff over time as we just focus on new things that fill our memories. And this bad seed has been held in the palms of Mother Earth and Mother Mary and like all these mother energies. And they're very loving and compassionate. And they're holding this child of theirs, which is also a part of you and you are also a part of their children kind of thing. <laughs> um, so she, they've been nurturing you and you have somehow decided you are a bad seed. And even though you don't have the memories, you kind of emanate like a, a dirty energy. Um, you're not quite out of the seed yet either, but I feel the love that surrounds you and for some reason you're not able to match it. You're just kind of like dirty, vibrationally dirty. And I hear a voice from inside the seed, like within the soul of this. It just, the soul asks to be released. And the soul is tired. And I just let the decision be made by the universe. 
And the flower, popcorn flowers are not giving up on you. Mother Earth and Mother Mary and all the Divine Mothers are not giving up on you. All the Divine Fathers are not giving up on you. All the kindness and love in an infinite universe is not giving up on you. Nobody has stopped trying. We've all been here with the door wide open welcoming you to walk through it. And even still you are trying to resist your path. I see her turning to like a charcoal like ash. She really wants like the human mind for us to forget about her. Just forget about me. See, she's still resisting. Nobody souls just go away forever. No, that is a lie. That is a soul lying to itself. The soul can say, I just want to run away and nobody come after me. And I just want to go to a dark corner of the infinite universe and just be there. They're carrying literally every soul in an infinite universe within their own heart. You can't escape the infinite universe. It's not how it works. You're trying to run away from the love. That's all you're doing. You want to just continue to separate yourself more, but why? Why would you do that? When you need the love the most right now, She says, I have a bad heart, I'm poisoned, I'm infected, I hurt people, like on and on and on and on. It's like, God, get over yourself. <laughs> it's like, come on already, you got this. All you have to do is just say that you love yourself, that you forgive yourself, that you are beautiful, that you are good. And I stop defining yourself and just know what you are, and that you're part of everything. I ask her a question, I say, if you could, if you could be something that you would define as beautiful, what would that look like? How would that feel? She tells me a long time ago, and she just shows me a, a very, like a sun, very, very far away, and it swirls, slowly swirls, and there's a dark red hue that um, is around the sun. And she points at it, and it feels like a peaceful, gentle memory of when everything was good, and everything was right, and the pain wasn't there. I say that is sun is still within you. That light is still circulating within you. You never left it. You are still a part of that light that place that memory because it is also a part of you she says but what does that mean then i want you to tell me what you think that means says it means that I can be beautiful like this memory. They say I want you to use a different set of words to define it. See if she can say. She doesn't use words, she uses pictures and she shows me that um, she has this spire, this very gently circulating sun. And she says she's found this to be mesmerizing, healing of her essence, like healing of her mind and her eyes, her body, her skin, like healing of her very being and soul. And if she is this, then that means she radiates healing of other souls. She heals souls. 
They say you're on you're on the right path. You're on the right track. You are understanding. And now suddenly we see that she is above where she was. So there there's no jar that she's put herself in. There's no weird little red riding hood. There's no there's nothing anymore. She just simply needed to acknowledge what she is what she always has been, what she's been running away from and creating a lot of excuses to not be that for some reason. Um, there's pain that inspired this. She's um, turning into a very angelic energy and wise. And she's remembering herself, which means you too will be experiencing yourself remembering yourself and feeling like who you truly are an awakening okay and you're going to feel and be it and anything else that we've seen or that you experienced or how you translate your life or said things to yourself to put you down none of that is exists anymore it's totally gone that is totally gone now and you tell me that you want to um heal the darkness that um that your light can penetrate the darkness is the best way i could describe what she's saying because the darkness that surrounds the sun that she is um cannot be her and it can't penetrate her light however she can penetrate the darkness and that's what she's saying showing me this and she says she's within your heart and there's nothing about um, she needs to apologize or she we need because she just is choosing to now remember and be who she is. And that's all she ever, that was the next thing for her. And there's nothing else. There's no nothing else that needs to be done here. She did it. Which means you did it. Everything feels a lot better. <laughs> This is going to mega help you out, like mega help you out. You're going to feel like a reborn person. And this will absolutely make a major impact in your QHHT sessions and the way that you are connecting with other souls and helping to heal their inner wounds. So good job. <laughs> okay, thank you for having the confidence to share. You can see why this session is like super cool and make a difference for other people. <sighs> All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> and uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, thank you everybody. I hope you all have a great day.